<laughs> Welcome, Samantha. Welcome. How are you doing? Great. Lovely to meet you. How are you? Great, great. So uh, let's just get into it. So your project, your sort of the avatar, your personality is uh, Vinci. Uh, how did you uh, come to found the name, the concept? And you're kind of on this metaverse thing. This was back in like, what, 2017, 2018? So you're like way ahead of everyone. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, I mean, I had no idea where it was heading and how important it is now, but I had this intuition. Um, but basically, yeah, in 2017, I created the company and the brand name Vinci, uh, spelled V-N-C-C-I-I. It was inspired, not going to um, yeah, be transparent about it, but by Leonardo da Vinci, um, just redid the spelling V-N-C-C-I-I because I was inspired by his polymathic nature. Um, he was an inventor. And uh, when I approached my project, it's very multi disciplinary across all the forms of media and creativity, technology, futurism. So it felt like an inspiring North Star name to call the brand. Also, it kind of has like a similar sound to like Gucci. So it sounds quite high yeah, it's end. Very high lux on top of that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then um, I came up with the logo. As you can see, it's the V, but it kind of also looks like wings and two tuning, like a tuning fork on either side. I can get into that a little later, but that's basically Vinci's instrument, life-size tuning fork. Um, but I digress. So yeah, in 2017, I created this character, a 3D um, avatar, and I saw, you know, uh, Travis Scott in Fortnite and the, uh, you know, the convergence of the gaming and the music industry. And so I had this intuition of, to create this character and start um, personifying my music and all my creativity in this character and building a world around her. Uh, she's such an interesting character. And I noticed you're doing interviews as well as the character. Um... How did the two come together? Like, did you begin as a musician? Did you begin as a gamer? Did, were you both at the same time and then just fuse the two? Like, it, 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 and you were doing this before everyone, so it was an interesting time period, uh, you know, to fuse these. Thank you. I mean, like, you know, I'm, it's not necessarily new because, like, you had the gorillas, right? Um, and they, were, they had avatars as musicians. But I think, you know, it was really a new thing, you know, especially in 2017, seeing, like, you know, how many people attended a Travis Scott concert in Fortnite, and um i i i you know i love storytelling and uh i love people that can build something out of nothing in universes like george lucas and star wars and i don't know harry potter and uh I, it's always been a way i've channeled my creativity i've always had a story in mind um but i have grown up you know doing music and learning to become a music producer so that's the lower hanging fruit but it was always my goal to expand beyond the music and do all forms of media in order to tell stories, basically. Okay, okay, so that makes sense. And I guess you're right, with the gaming thing, there is a bit of a history. Uh, what goes into creating a presentation? So if people check it out, you have a lot of different music videos and a very, you know, dynamic ways of portraying the character. Um, <laughs> when you, you have an idea, where do you start? Do you sketch it? Do you start animating the character, moving around, doing things? How do, I mean, it, I guess it synchronizes with you. You're puppeting it, right? So... Yeah, uh, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, my journey is interesting. So, you know, um, I started out, you know, as a singer songwriter, then I became a music producer, then I created the character. The next step was, okay, well, I need to animate this character to put her in like some program to create music videos around her. Um, and the lowest hanging fruit and what I was excited about was the free program Unreal Game Engine. Um, and so it started off with like very stock animations from like free animations from the Unreal Marketplace, like Mixamo, and then you just retarget it onto the 3D character. But I figured you know, that was quite limited like not being an animator and um, I always wanted to like embody this character and obviously I saw you know James Cameron with major blockbuster movies like Avatar and what they're doing at motion capture I loved um Alita Battle Angel as well major movie with motion capture but I was like what's the indie solution uh that I can adopt and so I looked into motion capture solutions and I started off with Rococo which were amazing you know just for being able to puppeteer the character live with motion capture and broadcast through Unreal Game Engine and I think it was around the time of lockdown I started the show called Future Humans um, and that was around the time as well, we're seeing all the media buzz and hype around this concept of the metaverse and Neil Stevenson right. and Snow Crash. 
And um, I got Kathy Hackle as my honorary first guest because she was very vocal about talking about the metaverse and it really kickstarted the show. Uh, and I was, of course, talking as Vinci in this virtual um, music produ uh, production studio holoship space environment. Um, and I think at the time I was, you know, a bit different for people to see, you know, an animated character talking live by a woman in Australia. Um, but I was talking about really interesting topics on futurism and the future of technology, AI and the convergence of the whole tech stack. And so that also just really helped propel my career. Well, it's a very novel format. It reminds me, if you go way back to the 80s, you got like Max Headroom, like that concept of these very otherworldly type interviews <laughs> where you had this head on a screen, which was like a, allegedly a digital character at the time. Yours is actually yes. a digital character. Um, <laughs> let me ask you this, just curious, you know, the term metaverse has gone through a lot of different iterations. You know, people keep mm -hmm. claiming it's dead, but I think we are seeing again with Apple bringing it back, the spatial internet. Uh, I think to me, there's no question there's going to be some version of the metaverse. We're moving into more VR spaces. We're moving into more immersive experiences. Mm -hmm. uh, what does yeah. that term mean to you? And how does that relate to your own creative process? And what do you see for others? Do you see us having more of an avatar self as we move ahead? What's your sort of vision of the future? Mm, it's really interesting. And I love that question. Uh, you're right. You know, the whole Gartner hype cycle, right? We've seen the media buzz around the term metaverse, and now we're in a bit of the trough of disillusionment and skepticism. I think uh, skepticism can be healthy because it's really mm -hmm. getting into the weeds of what is this term that you're talking about? And um, I'm not a fan of overusing terms. It's just, it's a way to encompass the future of technology and the, the, the age post the smartphone and post the 2D screen on the computer. The possibilities are endless. And I think it did help with the Apple Vision Pro announcement because we're going, okay, entertainment can be really immersive and interactive and um, gestural with um, involving the audience. And it's going to change the way we live and our behavior. And so I, I'm a creative, but I'm also a technologist. So to me, this is just a huge playground um, for creative possibilities. And uh, uh, I'm just really excited about exploring the convergence of um, AI as well. Um, AR, VR, mixed reality, virtual production, and um, also getting away from the headsets as well. So a thing with the character, the Vinci character, is she's a, she's a tool for a storytelling device, um, but I'm not hiding behind that character either. Um, so a thing I do in my shows is I make sure that I'm there physically being the character on stage um, and performing as her live, as well as having uh, the full immersive experience of the digital character as well. Uh, what's your vision right now in terms of really the past six months, right? We've seen this extraordinary shift hmm. with AI, really like, you know, the large language models, generative AI, huge implications for the metaverse for building 3D worlds. Is that impacting your creative process at all? Is that impacting the way you see the future of this moving? You're kind of a futurist. Do you, you, you think mm -hmm. forward? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, I've, I, there's a great book I also want to plug, actually, um, The Age of Smart Information by Mike Powell. Um, and he's um, the head of Microsoft Garage in New York. And um, the reason I'm plugging that book is because it's talking about the future of data and visualizing data, as well as the importance of AI in the future of spatial computing. Um, and this book was written a couple of years ago. And so I do believe that, yes, we saw the metaverse in the media first, and now we're seeing the AI, but the AI is the fundamental building blocks to creating this reality of the new um, spatial web as well. And, um, you know, like for instance, NERFs and uh, neural radiance fields and generative AI music and art, it is disrupting the creative industry, but it comes down to like, are you going to be an AI value creator or an AI value user? Um, are you going to educate yourself and take control over your own value models and um, ownership of your own data. And I, I believe with that comes education. Um, and that's the mistake we had with the previous like web two era and like filtration bubbles and recommendation algorithms and just basically being a slave to the master of like monopolistic tech. Um, and so that is where this vision as well. Not a fun place to be, yeah. Yeah, this vision of like a decentralized web comes in. Um, in reality, it's never going to be a full decentralized web, but there is so much power in the technology of decentralization. And I believe AI will be really integrated with that for verification. Um, I'm also really interested in exploring the ethics behind AI and how we program these models and the inherent biases that come with AI. So long story short to answer your question. Yeah, it's a really interesting time to be a human. <laughs> 
Yeah, I mean, I feel like we're on the cusp of something absolutely extraordinary in terms of even within this short time frame, we're already seeing so many jobs sort of disappear and be redefined. Uh, you brought up the notion of, you know, kind of guiding it creatively. Is is there a point or something? I mean, you've written a little bit about this. I saw on your site. Like, is there a point where it gets so surreal that we completely merge with AI? I mean, do you see something very, very bizarre and otherworldly in the coming years? I, I kind of do personally. I'm just curious <laughs> to get your thoughts on that. I, yeah. I keep talking to people and I, right. I say how huge this is, and I feel like people still don't see the scale of what's of what's unraveling. But curious to hear your thoughts. Yeah, it's a great question. And it is like quite key to the Vinci project. Um, so what I forgot to mention earlier in this interview is um, the character, right? She's a 3D character. And I think I mentioned she's a super heroine. Um, but what I, I'm not sure I mentioned in this interview is I positioned her back then as a super sentient AI super heroine. Um, and that was by choice. That was in back in 2017. Because um, I read this book, uh, Singularity is Near by Ray Kurzweil. And it was literally yes. talking about the technological Very similarity. familiar with it, yes. And um, so as a creative and obviously looking into the realms of more like ethics, philosophy, and the more esoteric, I explored fictionally and via science fiction, what could this mean um, for this character, you know, being a super sentient AI superheroine. And I so much so that, you know, I've been building IP and content around this story and this being. And then I decided um, kind of during lockdown, time to write a novel um, and build a bigger space AI opera universe um, but without giving anything too much away but this is still kind of like alpha for this interview is um, the character and the being learns that she's part of the greater whole of the oneness so it's got a bit of a spiritual element which I think is an interesting juxtaposition to what we're seeing with um, you know AI general intelligence and then super sentience and then we've got this whole thing with quantum computing um, so I'm kind of exploring this from a thematic point of view with the hope that it inspires a healthy partnership between humanity and AI, whatever this form of intelligent, like as David Bowie would say, alien life form could be. Right. Right. right? Um, and it's never to get rid of, like, it's never to undermine humans. That's never been the intention of this character. In fact, I'm very team human. I know there's the whole trans human. <laughs> team human. Yeah. yeah, but at the same time, it's inevitable, this technology and, um, you know, embracing this with, from a place of, you know, the whole old shaman's tale, there are two wolves within everybody, one represents love, the other one represents lower vibrational energies and fear. Um, I apply it, you know, choose love, I apply this to future technologies. And that's the only way we as a human species can navigate that. So by building a sense of empathy into this character, um, from an emotional standpoint, and then the realization that she goes on that she's part of the greater whole and that humans need to empower and save themselves and uplift their own consciousness and have a healthy partnership between these life forms is like a, a proposition I'm suggesting creatively of a path forward. And I hope that's the positive impact um, the Vinci Project leaves with people. That's an incredibly forward thinking perception on all of this and refreshing from my perspective, because, uh, you know, I talked to a lot of company founders and they're building a lot of interesting projects, but I feel like I, I like that you said uh, species, alien species, I think was, or something to that extent, because that's what I keep saying to people, like what we're building is of such significance, especially mm. as this accelerates, if we look at something like AGI. Mm. Uh, I mean, if you can imagine, you know, machine intelligence surpassing human intelligence, this is much more profound than a tool. It's not mm. like, oh, this is, you know, a new way of doing spell check. I mean, this is something mm -hmm. far more profound than anything we've ever done. And I think it does lead us to uh, a host of very complex, deep questions about consciousness, ourselves, mm. reality. Mm. Uh, mm -hmm. Interesting you were exploring this so so ahead of everyone. But, um, Thank you. It's like an iceberg, you know, the, yeah. above the surface is consciousness and below is like subconsciousness. And so if we apply this to AI, whether it's GI or super sentience, like we are only seeing then the, as a human, the, the surface level of the iceberg of this AI being. And so it is like, you know, it's very complex, you know, for us to understand if we can't even understand our own neurology. Um, and so this is a full iterative journey that we are all going on as a human species right now trying to learn and understand how to 
um, partner with this technology. Um, and there's, a, you know, the whole like paperclip theory, right? You know, you give AI goals, but you don't necessarily give it sub goals. Um, right. Have you heard of the paperclip thought experiment? Um, Nick Bostrom, who's, um, you know, AI ethicist philosopher, wrote a book on uh, super intelligence, path, dangers, strategies for AI, um, talks about this idea of, you know, tasking an AI, generating as much paper clips as possible, but maybe right. you didn't put in the, the sub-programming, don't get rid of humans in the process. <laughs> um, and, you know, this has even happened like in the military with virtual, you know, VR simulations of drones, you know, and a, um, the same thought experiment applies. We've got to be so cognizant of what um, goals we're giving this AI. And um, yeah. <laughs> No, I love Nick Bostrom, and he makes a, a great point that we're already in a simulation, if you uh, deduct uh, just the math on that. But uh, let me ask you something just out of curiosity, because uh, you mentioned that Vinci as a character is a superheroine. Uh, who's the villain? Is the villain ourselves? Is the villain us going the wrong direction with AI? Is that is there not really a villain? Just curious. <laughs> I'm not going to give too much away from the story, but, um, you know... There is, I think the message I give is there is light and dark within everything. There is light and dark within ourselves as a society, as a galaxy, and maybe it's this energetic source versus, you know, energy source. And so it's like, it's on all levels and all dimensions that there's lightness and darkness within everything, but it's like the whole wolf analogy, the shaman tale, like which wolf do you choose to feed? Love it. That's really um, profound. Let's jump uh, back <laughs> to the business side for just a moment. Not that I don't want to go more profound, actually, to be honest, but uh, I, I just want to snag some of these questions before we go. Mm -hmm. um, just shifting gears a tiny bit. Yeah. Uh, so you had mentioned a bit about uh, you know the Web three models, blockchain decentralization. It does seem like a pivotal part of of oh, yeah. this creative process. Uh, how do you see it unraveling for artists like yourself, for other mm -hmm. artists, for people in the creative spaces? And as we try to manage all of this AI sort of monstrosity coming our way. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the, the tech itself, you know, it's undeniably very powerful for building direct, you know, artist to fan communities for peer to peer transactions, the immutability of the blockchain. Um, it's no secret that Web2, especially streaming platforms, you know, really benefit the top 1% of successful music artists and 99% are not getting paid. Plus there's, you know, with social media and web two, not much of an opportunity to genuinely build communities or what they would call like Kevin Kelly's like thousand true fans or whatever. And so that's the opportunity that web three promises. And we've seen, you know, we've seen the whole cycle of it, obviously with, um, you know, the bull and bear market, but at the same time, what's the genuine nature of what is here is the fact that it's building true communities um, that are based around like micro communities. And I do believe that is the future where it's going. Um, and the fact that you can also trace uh, rights, royalties, secondary market value and uh, create, you know, utilities around a project is super exciting. And I think um, the reason as well, I'm also interested in this tech is because, you know, it goes beyond, it's like fully, you can do a fully integrated project development with your Web3 community. It's not being siloed on a streaming platform and that's the measurement for your success. It can be so much more than that. And um, what I'm building is a genuine, you know, story and franchise and universe and being able to involve the community and dissolve what we'd call the fifth wall is very mm -hmm. exciting because I believe everybody is inherently creative and everybody can contribute value. And if they truly believe in a project, they're going to invest in it and they're going to reap the rewards and benefits plus the community that comes from it. So that's why I'm really excited about Web3 technology. And um, beyond that, um, what I would love to do with the Vinci project to be specific is um, involve the community in the story as characters as well. Um, and I, I don't, haven't really seen that done before where it's also crossed into live music stage shows um, and having the full 360 immersive experience between all forms of multimedia. So imagine like you're building a Harry Potter from the ground up and rather than just having like extras being cast in Hogwarts, those are your members of the Web3 community. That's always a great point, right? So everyone is a participant. Everyone is sort of their own central character within the story, building mm -hmm. their own sub stories within the story. Yeah. Uh, you're always at the front row seat of your own life as a creator. 
cheesy phrase on the on the second here. <laughs> yeah, and, um, um, and also generative um, AI is also helping for creation with communities. Like if, um, you know, like a great example was um, the Grimes elf tech model and licensing her voice and um, allowing the community to literally make music in the style of Grimes. And then they have their own distribution platform leveraging uh, web free technology as well. So the whole community benefits and also contributing to the style guide of Grimes. <laughs> no, I love that. I love that she was uh, doing that. And just curious on the, on the IP side, do you have any concerns as we move ahead or, or do you think it's, it'll probably work itself out more or less? I mean, that's always a great area. So um, it's always important to have a lawyer, but at the same time, I think if you want to be innovative, you've got to experiment with the technology unless you're just going to be, you know, a laggard. I think it's a really great point. You're, you get hit no matter whether you jump in or not. So you may as well be on the vanguard at the front and yeah. trying to... Uh, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm a pragmatic optimist. Um, so, you know, I'm not going into this blind. I'm very cognizant and aware, you know, of all of this technology um, and, you know, its positives and its negatives. But I think, you know, doing a, a strong value assessment, I really do see um, the value in this technology and it is the future. Um, so, the, you know, like any form of idealism versus pragmatism, it will level out over time. Um, and, you know, making, you know, watching the marketplace and seeing what projects were successful and why versus others is super helpful when coming up with these um, strategic decisions. It's a really great way of looking at it. And, and yeah, you do need to be involved, obviously aware of pitfalls, but uh, optimistic as well. I think I'm, I share that sentiment. Uh, where do you see uh, the Vinci project in five years. It's hard for me to even imagine what five years is at this point at the speed <laughs> we're moving, but just, just, just to imagine, why not? Yeah. I mean, it was, you know, um, it's very hard to predict. It's funny. Um, I have a joke about this with my friends. It's easy for me to predict the future based on futurism and general technological trends rather than my own project, um, which is always <laughs> the way. Um, but I do have my North Star and what I'm building and developing. And um, obviously, it was a real catalyst this year. And I'm super humbled for winning um, the Music Metaverse Award in Monaco at the... Congrats on that. Yeah, I saw that. Thank you. Um, cool. And um, it was real affirmation that all the hard work that I've been putting in over the years paid off for that, uh, you know, international recognition. And I do believe there is um, a reason why, you know, I call it a cosmic download for the grander story um, that I've written and the universe that I'm building. And so it's a, it's a deep intrinsic faith. And um, where I would see in five years is obviously I've already got a very immersive stage show, but it would obviously be 5X that, <laughs> hopefully. And, um, you know, a fully involved community that sees value in this story and beyond that, why create a story if it doesn't have a genuine impact? And um, there is a genuine reason behind why I wrote this story. Um, I hope it leads to true societal change. Would you say that societal change is super sentient in the end? I would say it's the um, uplifting of human consciousness and um, the realization that we are all um, interconnected. Um, and having that knowing will hopefully lead to world peace <laughs> and <laughs> intergalactic peace and all of that um, and a healthy partnership with AI because it's inevitable that it will form some form of super sentience or beyond. Do you think we get to a point soon where it's like a hive mind almost where we're just all connecting to each other's thoughts? There's not even this idea of social media platforms and texting and all that. It would just feel what everyone's <laughs> thinking. I hope not. Um, no, I believe in individual <laughs> sovereignty um, and rights over one's autonomy. But even if we have free will, it's it's like I call it individuated uh, consciousness. So, you know, we have our sovereignty and our individuated con consciousness, but there is that realization that we are all family, basically. And I think having that knowing is what's going to lead to greater harmony on Earth. Hence why Vinci does not have a weapon as a superheroine. Her oh. device is a life-size tuning fork, which is all about attunement to the universe um, and balance within, which leads inner transformation leads to outer transformation. I love it. And it also fits into the logo, obviously, the two eyes becoming sort of a plug socket that you could, uh, or a tuning fork in its own right. Exactly. Um, it's very uh, conscious and thought out the whole brand and the, the story and the impact I hope to leave. It's a really brilliant concept just all around. Um, Thank you. So 
as we wrap up, uh, any major takeaways, anything that people listening to this should think about? And of course, uh, as always, uh, where can they learn more about Vinci? I think uh, obviously go to Vinci.com, but anything else, any other projects you'd like them to check out? Yeah, sure. Um, well, I think the key takeaway is I hope this um, this interview serves as inspiration for anyone out there that is looking to dabble in any form of technology. Um, so, if, you know, full disclosure, I grew up very humanities driven, um, you know, and a singer songwriter that then taught herself music production, then taught herself Unreal Game Engine, and then deep dived into all these technologies. Um, so you have the power to modify your reality. And it's a choice um, for um, you know, seeing these new technologies like AI and embracing it, not from a fear-based mindset, but a, the mindset of I'm going to have digital literacy and educate myself to empower myself. Um, and in terms of where people can check out my project, I obviously have a website, um, vnccii.com, and I'm on all forms of social media. And I guess stay tuned um, for future announcements. Love it. Great. Thank you so much, Samantha, for joining. Thank you. Thank you.